How you doing guys? Um, today I'm going to be making a video about the new Insta360 X4. <clears throat> um, in this video I'm going to do uh, not a comparison of the X3, but uh, a first um, impression of a 360 camera. I've never owned a 360 camera so I can't uh, compare it to anything else. But um, what I'll do is I'll give you my uh, opinion on this 360 cam, uh, whether it's worth getting and uh, I'll show you some sample footage as well from the camera so uh, yeah let's get into it and uh, go from there so let's have a look what modes we can shoot in on the new Insta360 X4 the first mode we're going to look at is the video and we can shoot in 8k 30 frames a second We can also shoot at 5.7K at 60 frames a second. We have also got 4K at 100 frames per second as well, which will give you some nice slow motion shots. So besides all the video modes we have, we have also got the ability to shoot in star lapse mode which is by here and we can shoot at 18 megapixels at the that's that is the max setting we can use so without going too crazy into depth with the modes this camera has I'll briefly show you what you can shoot in uh, so we've gone through video, active HDR video, time lapse, time shift, bullet time, loop recording, uh, star lapse, burst mode for photos, interval for photos, HDR photos, and then photo, so single photo, and then back to video. If we go on our single lens mode, we have got free frame video, we got me mode, and then we got loop recording, uh, photo mode again. Uh, video and then we got free frame video which is going back to the beginning again so that is the total amount of modes that we have available to us um, a quick one as well uh, I think the the most important ones of this camera for me is the ability to shoot 8k 30 frames a second this gives you so much room to play with without losing too much quality and then the other one would be 5.7K at 60 frames a second. These were the main selling points of the camera for me. So let's talk about all the uh, accessories and mounts that I have bought for the Insta360 X4. Uh, these are some of the choices that I have made based on my use cases. Um, obviously the first one that I have bought is a uh, invisible selfie stick. Uh, this one here is the carbon version of the uh, selfie stick that Insta360 sells. Um, this extends uh, just over a meter I believe is a decent size and uh, it doesn't weigh nothing really due to it being carbon fiber uh, they do also sell an aluminium version of this um, but personally I wanted the stronger more rigid version of the selfie stick <coughs> uh, I have seen from previous owners that the metal one tends to break um, I'm not sure whether they just slide out of the columns or not or snap I'm not 100% sure but this one is pretty sturdy and as well with the uh, carbon version you get a upgraded quarter 20 on the bottom which is extremely uh, strong and rigid so you won't have no issues of that breaking off on your mount uh, so that is the selfie stick so to go with the selfie stick uh, the carbon one that I got I am using this tripod here. This is off a uh, Ronin S gimbal. Uh, I tend to use this because it's nice and 
rigid and strong. Uh, you can buy um, selfie sticks with these built in, but personally I like the ability of just to remove it if I want to. And this is extremely sturdy when it's on the ground, like that. So that is perfect for the uh, carbon selfie stick, nice and strong. Also, if you notice, I have got three suction cups here. <clears throat> these are from Ulanzi. Um, these big ones here are perfect for the uh, Insta360 X4. Um, so the reason I bought these was mainly to mount on a car. I previously had one of these on hand, so I decided to buy another one just to give it that um, extra safety when mounting these on a car or anything like that or windows. Um, so I've got that and that. And then I've also bought the smaller version of the uh, Ulanzi one. This is okay. It doesn't have the suction power of the much larger one. As you can see, it's like is a lot smaller, so you can't expect the suction power of the bigger one. But it's alright for mounting um, to windows. Uh, can mount it to a car as well. If you're just going to use this onto here, then that'll be fine. But personally, I like the extra safety and protection of the larger suction. These things, when they are mounted on a window or a car, they literally do not move, even with one of them. Um, I think the payload on these, vertical-wise, is 60 kilograms. So when you've got two of these together, that is 120 kilograms, which is great for the Insta360. Um, the other things as well that I've bought is these magic arms from Small Rig. And what I'll do is I will show you how I've mounted this on a car just now so you can see how this all works together but basically I have mounted it two different ways um, I've got a quarter 20 adapter on here which I can screw the selfie stick directly into it like so that would screw under there and that gives you a nice angle depending on the car um, and where you mount it I find this gives a nice angle and a good view of the car so if that doesn't work for you then the other way you can mount it is you can remove the NATO mount here and there's another quarter 20 on top that you can screw that into or you can just use this arm here which is what I do I basically screw that into there and then I can move this any angle that I need it to be and I can lock it in place like so and that is pretty sturdy when it's on a car and then with the other one as well I tend to place the other one somewhere like this and then I use the magic arm which clamps onto the selfie stick which makes it extremely rigid it's not going to be going anywhere so for car stuff this is perfect um, I know Insta360 sell their own kit for cars um, but if you've seen the price of the kit to mount these on a car, you're probably looking about £300 in the UK, maybe slightly more, I think. Um, but these, these are uh, £40 each, I believe. So £40 for that, £40 for that. Uh, these, this, I think I paid £20, £20 for that. And then these here, this was £20. And I think this one here, the shorter one, was slightly cheaper, maybe 15, 16, 100% sure. But it's just strong. These things are cool. And you'll get the nice super clamp with it, which you can clamp into your selfie stick. The only thing you've got to watch when using these, don't over clamp on the carbon, as you can crack the carbon, a selfie stick, which you don't want to happen. But other than that, that is all the mounts that I am currently using on the Insta360 X4. So here we have some examples on how I am using the suction cup to mount to my car uh, to give you an idea how you can use this setup. As I said earlier, Insta360 are offering a car kit 
for your X4, which you can use to mount on your cars, but this is a cheaper alternative that you can consider. Um, the overall setup of this is very rigid, so you won't have any issues, and the suction cups are extremely strong, so this is a nice setup. Here we have some sample footage uh, using the gear I've shown you previously with suction mounts mounted all around the car. Uh, I'm using 8K 30 frames a second on the Insta360 X4. So I'll let you judge the quality of the image and the videos. Other than mounting on the car, as you can see here, um, I had to try this. This is pretty exciting to mount a 360 camera to a drone. So this is a 10 inch custom drone that I have designed. Um, and by here, I'm gonna be mounting it to the 10 inch frame. Uh, with the cage on the Insta360, it's a little heavy for a smaller drone, but for the 10 inch, it is works out pretty well. It's still slightly too heavy, but you get some cool footage. Just a side note as well, if you want to fit these to a drone, the angle of the camera is best set slightly forward. Uh, the only problem with this is the, it offsets the central gravity of the drone, so you need your battery way back for this to work. When you purchase your Insta360 X4, you get these lens guards in the package with them. And these are the basic lens guards. You can buy premium lens guards, which are roughly about 30 to 40 pounds. But I wanna talk about the image quality and how these lens guards affect the image with uh, the mounted to the camera. So this first shot I wanna show you is a dog splashing water onto the lenses. And as you can see, when the water hit the lenses, you get sort of like a dome effect over your image. So really speaking, you may want to remove these lens guards when you are in a water environment. And um, what I have noticed as well, when you're in a hot conditions and you're using this uh, lens guards with, with water involved, the lens guards tend to steam up. Inside the issue of the lens guard steaming up in watery conditions, you also have the battle of cleaning the lens constantly. Um, from my experience, I've found that even if you slightly touch the lens, it'll cause the, the video quality or your image quality to look absolutely awful. So you really need to be keeping these clean if you want decent footage from this camera. So that's the only trade-off of these lens covers. Um, lens guards even so they are great for protecting your lenses and they will save you in the long run but at the same time you will sacrifice your video quality or your photo quality when using them i personally haven't tried the premium lens guards so i can't comment on them but from my own research i've done i can't really see a huge difference from using them so maybe I'll uh, upgrade the, to the to them in the future. Uh, the only benefit I can see to the premium lens guards over the um, standard ones is the fact that it is tempered glass and you will have less chance of scratching that lens over the standard guard. So a quick verdict of the Insta360 X4. Uh, would I recommend this camera for anyone who wants to capture, I don't know, something like holiday uh, videos or travel videos or hiking videos? Yes, definitely. I think this camera is perfect for that. Um, the ability to just stick the camera out uh, without looking, capture all around you with no worry of capturing the right shot. Um, is, that is an all, overall benefit of using a 360 camera. Um, 
Would I mount this to a drone on a regular basis? Definitely not. Uh, the size of this camera is way too big. Um, if you're gonna mount this to something like a five inch, it is simply way too big for that. Um, the overall weight of this as well is another contributing factor. So to mount this regular on a drone, your flight time will be pretty much, uh, depending on the size of frame, pretty bad. You could be looking at uh, three, four minutes max, maybe a bit more if you go on a larger drone. Um, so wouldn't recommend it for that, although you can get some cool shots with it. Besides that, the ability to shoot at 8K uh, is a game changer. Uh, you can crop in on your image without losing too much quality and you get the option now of shooting at 100 frames a second at 4k which is cool for some slow motion shots uh, the quality of that isn't as good as the 8k so don't expect it to be amazing but uh, it does a good job it is not on par with something like a gopro but again, this is a 360 cam, so you can get any angle you want uh, without the need of worrying where you need to point the camera or you know, uh, mounting it a certain way to get a certain angle. This just does it all, and that is the main uh, selling point of something like this. Another thing as well is the lens guards. Um, I love and hate these. Uh, it's great to be able to protect the main lenses of the Insta360 because if you scratch one of these you're going to have to send it off to get it repaired and that becomes quite expensive but these lens guards they do become quite a nuisance when using them um, for example you can accidentally touch one and you get smudges all over your footage which absolutely ruins the footage so that is a trade-off of that and another thing as well um, you will notice a sort of a dome effect when you're filming um, this this is depending on how clean these lenses are for example if you've got a little bit of water splash on it or a fingerprint or anything like that you can noticeably see the dome on the lenses which completely ruins the footage but you can't live without them if you're using this mainly for action so um, I maybe look at the premium lens guards I personally haven't tried them like I said previously uh, but uh, the standard lens guards I'm not a huge fan of them but they do the job so there's that so let's talk about the frame that Insta360 do sell the frame isn't actually made by Insta360 so it's made by PGY Tech and this frame overall is great it gives you the ability to use a GoPro mount on the bottom which are also magnetic so that's great and then you've got your quarter 20 on the bottom so you don't have to worry about damaging the quarter 20 in the camera um, the cage overall is great but you've got to take in consideration as well you cannot take the battery out so you'll have to remove the camera out of the frame every time and also the uh, wind mufflers that goes on the microphones they will not fit either because the microphones run right up there which is also a shame uh, the design of this frame is pretty cool there's a clasp on the top holding it together which is great and then you just slide the camera out like that and then you can change your battery just like that bit of a nuisance to take it in and out um, the most annoying part thing about this frame is when you slide the camera back in you have to align it to the frame otherwise it could be completely skew if to the frame the camera sort of doesn't line up with the frame uh, unless you look down it and check to make sure it is perfectly straight and then you can just close the clasp job done so there is the the frame for the Insta360 X4. One of my favorite things about the X4 is the user interface. Um, the overall experience of using this camera with the screen fitted on the X4 is great. Uh, it's so simple to use. So for example, if I wanted to go into the menu, I just click on the bottom left here and I got all the shooting modes right here. So I can go into video, change the frame rate, 8K30, and then I can swipe across 
and I can change all the settings within that video mode uh, so change the color profile just like that everything is straightforward and easy to use with a larger screen as well this makes things a lot easier uh, especially outdoors as well you don't have any issues with um, operating this screen compared to something like a GoPro where the screen is so small um, it is literally a pain in the ass to use sometimes uh, sometimes you can press the screen and nothing happens or you're pressing it and you can't get the settings you want but with this with a larger screen this makes it so much easier and that is a great feature of the X4 but the trade-off of that is it's much larger so um, it depends what you need uh, for your so that just about sums it up I try not to keep the video too long uh, hopefully you can learn something from the video I've created here uh, if you can take anything away from what I've shown you or give you a decision on whether or not this camera is for you that is also great um, so thanks for watching I'll catch you next time cheers